So let's continue on with the rest of our site. The next portion that we're gonna work on is the ability to create portion. Um, and I'm just going to call it the about blurb. And then we're also gonna add the visual artist and photographer uh, on the right side of the site or the right side of the screen. So let's go ahead and get that going. If we jump into our code, let me close our Git repo. The first thing I did wanna do that I haven't done earlier is I wanna set the margin and the padding on our body in HTML to zero. And if you're using normalized CSS or reset CSS, this shouldn't be an issue for you, but for us, we're just going to add a padding of zero and margin of zero. So what I'm first going to do is let's jump into our banner component. And outside of the container, I'm going to make sure that it's nested in the banner. We're going to create a div with the class name of fixed misc, which is miscellaneous or M-I-S-C. And this is going to be um, on our design. This is going to be where it said the visual artist and photographer. So let me just copy that text and just paste it in there. If we see the result, um, we'll just see it on the right side of the screen here, um, but we need to add our styles. Jump into our style.scss and look for the banner. Uh, make sure that it's nested on the banner and outside everything else underneath the scroll. We're gonna just go ahead and add the fixed MISC class. And we're going to make the position fixed so that when we scroll down, that message is following us. The top is going to be set to 50%. Our right is going to be set to negative 48 pixels. And we're going to add a transform for rotate of negative 90 degrees. And if we see what we've got so far, we can see that it's pretty much laid out almost there. Next, we are adding a font weight of 700 to make it bold. And we need to make the text transform uh, set to uppercase so that each letter is capitalized. Next, we want the font size to be 14 pixels, or in our case, it's going to be 0.875 rem. The letter spacing will be 1.5 pixels. So go ahead and add 1.5 pixels. The color is going to be white and we add a mixed blend mode of difference on this one, um, and I'll show you why at the end of the video. Uh, but what you're going to do is go ahead and add mixed blend mode of difference, and this is gonna make it black on a white background and white on a black background. And then finally, go ahead and add a Z index of eight. We also wanna compensate for our uh, media queries. We wanna go ahead and access the max width of 1440 pixels. And this will look good on our laptop screens. So let's set the right to negative 112 pixels. Save that and let's see our result. So we've got it positioned exactly where we want it. And on a laptop view of 1440 pixels, it doesn't come over too far on the left and not too far on the right. Now that that's done, let's create a component for our blurb. Now for the blurb, we can honestly just copy the banner.js because there's no need to rewrite a bunch of uh, code we've already written. So let's just rename this to about blurb. Um, and then the style we're going for is camel case. So it's going to be about then a capital B for blurb. So change the component name to about blurb and then make sure we export about blurb on the bottom. Let me close this terminal. I don't like it. And then let's go ahead and clear up the JSX. So we don't need this. So anything nested inside the row can be removed as well as the scroll. We don't need that. Save that. And then for the class name, we're going to call it about dash blurb. And we are gonna use a Gatsby link in this. So make sure we import that. The way to do that, you can just import link from Gatsby. And for our images um, with the Gatsby image, we are using two images. So the images we are using, if I zoom out here, is the fist image and the flower uh, image. So we can get rid of the orange um, and it's going to be one, two, three brackets. So just get rid of that there. And then we can change the names to correspond with the images that we're using. So the first image is going to be that flower mouth image and this is the name of the image file, and then the name of our property will just be flower. Same goes for the diamonds, let's just do fist, and the name of the image is fist. Let's save that, and then we can actually start coding our JSX. But before we do that, so instead of using the class name of row, I'm gonna change this to inner-blurb. And inside inner-blurb, the first div we're going to create is one for content. 
that way we can have the content nested inside um, such as the mock the ability to create the uh, ipsum text and then the button row go ahead and add a h3 tag for the ability to create and we can just write the ability to create here then we're going to add a p tag for our ipsum text and we can just copy it from the mock go ahead and paste that and if we had alt z or sorry not alt z if we had option z what's going to happen is going to wrap our text inside vs code then we can add a, another div with the class name of button row and inside the button row is going to have a link and the link is going to say view series which will link to the work page if we save this to view our changes we aren't going to see anything um, and that's because we are not rendering or returning the component in our index page so if we jump into the page folder and go into index.js let's go ahead and import the about blurb component change banner to about dash blurb and also the component structure is about blurb save that and we can just import about blurb in our return and add a self-closing tag if we view the changes we can see that it's rendering out the content from the about blurb components Let's go ahead and finish this out with the JSX and then we could style it. So outside the content and inside the inner blurb, we're going to create another div. This div will have a class name of images and inside that it's going to have two divs. One div is going to have the class name of top dash right. And inside this top dash right div, we are going to render out the Gatsby image. So if we just use Gatsby image with fluid as our attribute. Let's close this. And using the data variable, we're going to access our image. So the first image that we want on top in our mock is the fist image. So all we need to do is write data.fist. And then we're going to call the child image sharp within Gatsby.js. And then finally, it's going to be dot fluid. Save this. And if we preview to see if the image is being pulled in, we can see that it is being pulled in. Um, we're going to copy this top right div and paste it underneath, but just change the class name to top dash left rather than top dash right and change the fist to flower. Save that and if we preview it, we got the other flower image rendering at the bottom. Finally, we need to add a div for the black box and, and with the black box, we need to add another image that has this maroon overlay which goes on top of the two images. So let's go ahead and do that. The black box and the overlay is going to be outside the container but inside the about blurb. So let's go ahead and create a div with the class name of black box. And there isn't going to be anything inside this div, but we are going to copy it and we're going to add another class of overlay for the black box. That's going to do it for our JSX. If we preview what we've got, we've got the text coming in and we've got the two images being rendered out. Let's go ahead and style this and we can keep going. So in our style.scss, let's go ahead and create a section for the about blurb. And first we're going to do our skeleton. So it's going to be about dash blurb. Inside the about blurb is going to be inner blurb, not inner header, but inner blurb. Inside inner blurb, we've got dot content. And inside dot content, we've got an h3. We've got a p tag, and we've also got a button row, which inside that button row has an a tag outside of the content and inside of the inner blurb we do have a image class so it's going to be dot images actually and inside the images class we have a dot top right class and outside that we have a we have a top dash left now outside of the images and also outside of the dot inner blurb so it's going to be only inside the about dash blurb we are going to bring in our black box so it's going to be dot black dash box and that's going to do it for our skeleton. Now, one thing I did notice is I did name the images top right and top left, but even though in the mock, it's really top right and then bottom left. So let's change that just so that we can have a better understanding of what the class name represents. So the flower one is the one that's bottom left. So we could change, where is it at? Top left to bottom left as well as the style, we could change this to top left to bottom left, just so that we have a better naming convention. 
Now let's actually start styling. So for the about dash blurb, we're going to add a padding of 48 pixels top and bottom and a padding of zero on left and right. We're going to make the background color and make the position relative. Inside the inner blurb, here's where we're going to use Flexbox. So just go ahead and add display flex. We're going to justify the content to a space dash between. And we're also going to align the items to center. Inside content, we're going to set the width of the content items to a width of 33%. And we're also going to add a media query. So go ahead and add at media with a max dash width of 1440 pixels. In this media query, we are changing the width from 33% to 40%. So go ahead and save that. And if we preview what we have so far, we can see that the ability to create is on the left side, um, almost resembling the mock. So in our H3, let's go ahead and style the contents. So the content's going to have a font weight of 700 with the text dash transform of uppercase. The font size is going to be set to 1.8 rem with the letter spacing set to 1.5 pixels. And we are going to have a margin of zero. The P tag is going to have a font size of one rem, a line height of two rem, the font weight's going to be light, so we're setting the font dash weight to 300. And the margin for it is going to have a margin top of 40 pixels, zero margin on the left and right, and on the bottom it's going to have a margin of 72 pixels. Let's bring this down a bit. And for our button row, we're only changing the styles of the A tag, so add a font weight of 700. The font size is going to be 14 pixels, or in our case, 8.75 rem. The letter spacing is also 1.5 pixels. The color is set to the black variable. Text dash transform is also uppercase. And finally, the text uh, decoration is going to be set to none. That way we don't have an underline on our A tag. If we preview what we have, we can see that it's coming along great and it resembles the mock on Adobe XD. Great, so let's go ahead and work the right side with the images. We see we have two images, the black box and the overlay. So let's go ahead and do that. For our images class, we are going to set the width to 50 pixels. The height is going to be set to 1000 pixels. The position is going to be relative and we're giving it a Z index of seven. We're also going to add the media query, but I don't feel like rewriting it. So I'm just going to start copying it more often. So the media query is changing the height from 1000 pixels to 800 pixels. Let's go ahead and save that and work on the top dash right. So the top dash right image is the one with the fist. This is going to have an absolute position. The width is set to 460 pixels. The top is zero and the right is zero. We are going to have a Z index of four. So go ahead and save this. Let's preview what we have because I want to describe this real quick. Now, it does look messy because we haven't added the styles of the flower dude. But what I did was I created the image as a parent div and then the two images are children. So if I add a background of pink, for the images, and let me just get rid of, or add a display none of the uh, flower image. So I added a pink image. I created this perfect size for our images or our parent image. And then I set this image, the first one, to an absolute position so that I could work and move it around anywhere within this pink box. So I'm going to do the same with the other image. I'm going to add a correct size, and then I'm going to make the bottom left uh, zero just so that could be in the bottom left corner. So let's go ahead and remove the background of pink, remove the display none of our bottom left image, and it's going to have the same or similar styles to our top dash right. So I'm just going to give the position of the bottom left an absolute position. The width is going to be a bit smaller. It's going to have a width of 410 pixels. And then the left and the bottom are set to zero, just so it could be in that bottom left corner of that pink box we had. So save this and let's see what we've got. Uh, we can see that they're perfectly um, aligned to where we want it to be. But now I need to add uh, media queries just so that in smaller screens, the images do shrink a bit. 
So the media query is going to be added to the top right and it's changing the width from 460 down all the way to 360. So taking 100 pixels off the width and we're doing the same thing to our bottom left. Go ahead and drop that media query inside the bottom left and change it to 100 pixels less. So it's going to be 310 instead of 410. We've still got the same styles because this screen that I'm working on isn't 1440, it's just a bit larger. But now we can create that black box. So in the black box here, what we're going to do is set the background color to the variable of black. Change the height to a height of 418 pixels and the width all the way to a 36 pixels. Give it a position of absolute a right of zero and the top of 50%. We're also going to give it a transform translate Y of 50% just so that we could center it in the middle of the screen or in the middle of our section. And if we save this and take a look at what we have, we can see the black box is in the background of our two images. And we could also see this visual artist and photographer change color to white when it's hovering on it. This is because of that difference mix blend mode that I mentioned earlier. And it is the reason why we gave this uh, text here a difference of uh, for the mix blend mode, just so that could change colors. And it just gives it a better and cooler effect. So let's go ahead and add the overlay as well. Now I did add an overlay class to our other div. So all we need to do is if anything has a black box class and an overlay class, we're just going to change those styles. So go ahead and add an ampersand with the overlay class. We're changing the Z index to seven so that it could be on top of our images. And we are making the background color set to that maroon variable that we had up at the top. Nope, not black, maroon. And then we're going to give it a mix blend mode of overlay. Save that and let's add a media query for our black box so that when the screen gets smaller, this gets smaller as well. We're changing the width to 636 pixels and the height of the black box is going to be 340 pixels. This will also reflect with the overlay because they're both having the same class. Preview what we have, we can see the overlay working just as great as we want it to. And if we compare it to our mocks, they're pretty much, or the resemblance is uncanny, so they're pretty much the same. Um, just maybe there's a bit of size difference, but honestly, it's, it's fine in our case. So that's going to do it for this part of the video. If you did enjoy, please leave a thumbs up and look out for the next part. In the next part, we are taking a look at on adding the video and finishing up the rest of the site, as well as including the footer. So be sure to stick around and be sure to follow along. You can grab the final project in the description in the last video. So I'm going to have the code in a GitHub repo and you can find it there if you wanted to download it and mess with it. Um, I am still going to be using GSAP and the smooth scroll at the end of this project. So look out for that if you want to get into animations. Like I said, if you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up and look out for the next video. Have a wonderful day.